Good day, folks. Some people have been asking me more about the ion valve and how it works. So you see, um, I'm going to bring you a photo right now of the original ion valve, and I was creative with it and made different variations of it. And basically, the way it happens is the ion valve is kind of like a way to um, regulate, I would say, our fields. So you know how um, when we use very high frequency, very high voltage, what I was talking about, trying to separate the two, well, the ion valve can help us with that. And what happens is it acts very much like a cathode and anode setup here and a tube. So I'm going to show you my tube. Originally, it was just, I just used this plastic case here for my tube. So with the original ion valve, what you would have here is this tube here, and you would have like a metal screen with it all the holes, so the air can breathe all around here. And on the middle, you'd have your energized rod. So the output would be on the screen mesh here of your ion valve. And as the word says, the original idea is for ion flow so you could separate essentially the magnetic field component. Now what happens is in traditional systems, like for low voltage, you would have to put an electrolyte solution in here to successfully create that flow between the cathode and the anode. But what happens is it will also work if the voltage is high enough with just the air itself. So that's why it's important to do this. If you're gonna use an ion valve, you gotta go into like the 100 K to really maximize the effect of the ion valve as an air thing. Now, of course, if you want to get creative, some people with the advanced concept, they pump the inside with hydrogen, and that the hydrogen is easier to energize than oxygen, so it takes a lot less trigger power to create the transfer. So, in essence, there is a kind of loss to this but it's the kind of loss we want because it acts as a regulator. Now what happens with this, because it doesn't stress the input like we would be do running a closed loop with a resistor and that converts to heat. And this is a different kind of resistance, so to speak. So what's the wonder of this is you could use several ion valves and get a much longer distance in theory without stressing the input load. So that's where basically I was at by stacking multiple systems and the ion valve allows us for that. But I came up with different variants. See with mine, I didn't have the screen here. So I just put a carbon felt all around here and it worked as good folks, just something I tried. And here's my rod here. This is just the rod and I've got the cap of the jar here that closes and screws right in there. And I actually put a little hole with the help of my solder station. I don't know if you can see it. I'll have to open the jar. But that's to let the wire through for the um, carbon felt to make the contact where all the uh, one wire diodes would go to. Now, do you need the ion valve? Well, that depends, folks. If your uh, voltage source is uh, very low current, and depending on the frequency and how you're triggering it with, it might be just, and as some people observe, you just use the one wire directly and you're not going to have any problems. When you start getting into the extremely high voltages, you'll start noticing, like me, how the transients get into everything. They start traveling on non-conductors. You're trying to keep the loop open, but between the electric fields and the magnetic fields and the near field, it all couples back into the system somehow and you got yourself chaos. Well, this is where the ion valve could really help you. It helps you regulate that without actually stressing the input as a result of that regulation and actually helps the it so to speak tunes the system and you can stack more down the road here and maximize your extremely high voltage potential. So with that said, I had a variant of the ion valve and some people have asked me about this and I've just noticed that, hey, you know what? There is a secondary of a Tesla coil here. I had this crazy idea. What happens if you put the ion valve inside the Tesla coil here and not have an actual quote-unquote primary, just drive it with the energized rod. 
Well, it turns out, folks, it works pretty good that way, but you have to remember there's been a modification here. So even though you still got air going through, what's going to happen is you're going to have that dielectric in the middle here. And there's an effect called dielectric absorption. So in theory, what should happen here is this should actually nullify part of your gains, but because of the Tesla coil-like assembly here, we have a game of resonance, so it takes the field and increases the amplitudes. And what's very weird about this, and I don't like talking about things that I can't fully explain, but for the matter of transparency, and some people have asked me about this, what's a strange effect if let's say that on my system, I can't use the one wire with two dials direct because I've got too many high frequency transients, I can't split the two fields properly. So I want to do this, okay? So let's say by doing it this way, it brings it, it should bring it down because we have the dielectric, which is doing a bit of an absorption. So let's say we nullify this to half, 50K now, by the time the outside feels it. Well, what seems to be happening is with this, there's an amplification going and it looks like it's more like 200K is coming out now from, well, and resonating through this coil but the output through the one wire system doesn't go all over the place and zap you at high frequency like it does here at 1000 kV. So what I've noticed is you end up having a gain here, you could tap off and you leave the coil open, you see these are the two ends, you choose one end and you do your two diodes here. And I've noticed, and I can't full, I have ideas, but I can't fully explain it yet, this boosts the output and you're able to have more capacitors on the one wire dump without stressing the input load and without having that funny stuff that happens when the voltage is usually too high. So what I'm getting at is it's working in our favor. It creates a very, very high pure potential. It kicks all the current back, which gives us a hard time because we don't even want traditional current. What we're doing is changing the potentials using pure potential and then with those two two diodes, one wire system, we do displacement current when it sees a ground artificially or a real earth ground and that's what actually charges the capacitors is the displacement current which is not initiated by the trigger but enhanced because we're able to couple into the uh, heavy side field. But again, I don't completely understand why this works the way it works by using the coil as an ion valve or ion light valve but what I also did is I put a layer of foil inside all around the tube here so additionally this gave me another tap so it's like having two ion valves in one so I was able to get a few cap dumps to work off of the inner foil too and a bunch of them off the coil and I was still not stressing my input load so some people have asked me if Don Smith, some of his Tesla coils like assemblies, if they were maybe, you know, he runs them like this, if maybe it was kind of like an ion valve at the same time. Well, perhaps it was. I don't know the answer for sure, but maybe Don Smith found something like this and used it to his advantage. So there's the ion valve for you folks, as much as I know of it. I hope it leads everyone in the right direction if they were wondering what it was all about. So again, thank you for watching and looking forward to all your comments.